All right, welcome back to the Daily Mastermind. George Wright the Third here with my co-host on Thursdays, Justin Eli. How you doing? Good, George. How's it going? Good. Good to yeah. Be here. Thursday Thursdays we're going to be talking all business, and today we got marketing up, so this is going to be great. But as you know, we're here with your inspiration, motivation, and education every day. Try to keep this to about ten to fifteen minutes, and what we've started doing on Thursdays is talking about marketing. So if you remember last week, and and if you didn't, it was an extended podcast. So go back and listen to it. But Justin and I covered the seven steps for business mastery. And so just to kind of give you a quick review on that, it was mindset, mapping, marketing, monetize, momentum, mastery, and money. These are the seven steps that we believe if you implement, you can truly grow and build your business. What what else would you add to that? I mean, um, anything in particular with the seven steps? Uh, not really. Like we talked about last week, right? We've just, we've, we've done a lot of business and worked with a lot of business owners. And these seem to be the seven things that are truly important. And yeah. And most people have missed like one or two of the steps, right? right. So, um, I, I think that if people haven't listened to it, they got to go back and listen to it. Cause you know, For Justin sure. talked a lot about the individual steps, but Today, we're going to talk about marketing and, and Justin, your background, because you've, I mean, combined, we've had clients do over a billion dollars in sales, but you are absolutely a marketer. Um, and so what I wanted to do is I wanted to start with maybe breaking down, you've got this like three key steps for marketing or three critical areas, I guess I, I would call them. Could you kind of jump into that and, and start to help people to understand what the most important keys are? to having an effective marketing. Sure. Yeah, you bet, George. So, you know, the way the way that I look at it, marketing is that it's really, there's three components, um, you know, kind of look at it as my my magic marketing triangle. Um, so when I when I envision that, you know, it's got the, the three prongs of the triangle. Uh, you know, it's it's who is your market? What is your message? And what is the type of media uh, that you're going to use to convey that message? So the, the and, I, and I'm going to put this in the show notes for everybody, but um, imagine a triangle that has these three sides being market, message, and media. And if those three areas, and, and they, they go deep, and we're going to go deep over the next couple of uh, weeks with the podcast, but those are the most critical three areas. Do you find that there's one of those three areas that maybe people miss the most, or is it is it just they, they're not deep enough in all of them? Uh, typically, they're not deep enough in all of them. I, I don't think people put enough thought into before they spend their advertising money as to who their target audience really is. And I think really digging deep, uh, you know, into into all three sides of the triangle and, and really analyzing who your ideal client or customer is is going to be very important. Well, today, I think we can, we can, in fact, maybe what we'll do with the podcast is over the next three weeks, we'll cover all three of those areas because I do want us to go deep and give some specific strategies, something more tangible. And today we'll talk uh, mostly about market. But I also think um, the market, I wanted to just mention one other thing before we get into that. The marketplace is so changing all the time that I know that those three areas of market, message, and media, even if they have a rough idea of what's going on, it's tough to stay up to date on the marketplace, right? I mean, don't, haven't those change, things changed a lot? I mean, media alone, like with direct mail versus online and social, how often do you think people should kind of like readjust or look at these three areas? I mean, is this something they do strategically once a year, quarterly, often? Like, uh, Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I, I think, George, the first two, I think I think your your market is your market. You know, uh, your, your, your product or your service is going to be geared towards a specific type of person. Uh, the message is, is typically going to be the same, but I think what you're talking about is, is the media is constantly changing. Yeah. You know, and where do you find those people? Where are they hanging out? How are you connecting with them? You definitely have to stay on top of your game with the media. Yeah, I, uh, and I think that people adopt, as we get into growth strategies here in a couple of weeks, I'm excited about covering growth strategies with like upsell, cross-selling, downselling, bundling. I think people will start to realize that they can tweak their offers once we give them some of those strategies. Mm-hmm. So let's, let's dig in deep here for a second on the market because I know people hear random terms like, who's your avatar? Who are you targeting? 
But it, surprisingly, most people, and, and we get deep into what their market is, but most people really haven't got a clue, right? Like I, I've asked people, who's your market? It's like, ah, oh, you like older people or right. people that are health right. conscious. You're talking, a, you're not talking about generalities, right? Like you're talking specifics. So what, <laughs> let's, let's dig into this a little bit. What do you mean when you say, what's your market? So good question. So, so digging in a little further, right? There's really three things that I now look at when we're defining the market. And that is geography, demography, and then their affiliate ties or their their associations, Got it. right? Okay, and and we could dig yeah. Into let's those go. Deeper. Let's let's just go into those a little bit deeper. So when you say so, geography, demography, and uh, and affiliations. Let's break those down. Well, I start with geography because that's the easiest one. Okay. So that okay. So, yeah. so that's the way my mind works, right? So you know when we're thinking about you know we we have a business, we have a product or a service. Okay, what, what's what's the geography? Where can this product be sold? Where can it be be available? Right? You know, if you're selling, if you have an online business, you're selling a a, a book or a coaching program or a T-shirt, right? Right. That that can be sold international. Okay. Right? That can be sold anywhere. Where if you've got a business that is more retail driven, or you know, I don't know, you sell snowmobile trailers, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, that's going to yeah. be more localized. It's geared towards a different audience. So spending some time thinking about the geography and where your product can be sold is, is step number one. Do you talk, do you generally, when you're consulting with these businesses, do you generally try to keep people to stay uh, local versus global? Uh, do, do you talk to them about trying to just pick a geography or is it more just about identifying where the geography is? I mean, because there's we're, 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 we're out here in Utah. There's a lot of network marketing companies, health and nutrition companies. Um, you know, somebody's thinking about going globally um, with a health and nutrition versus locally. I mean, is there anything around geography or is it really just identifying where your product can be sold at an overall level? Like, are you trying to get people to kind of niche down into something in particular geography wise or no? Uh, a lot of that's going to depend on budget. Okay. Um, and a lot of that's going to depend on how, how we look at the next couple of questions as we drill down, right? Okay. So, you know, we're, we're, we're going to start with geography, but we're, our, our next step okay. uh, is we're going to look at demography, right? And what I mean by demography is, you know, that could be political views, that could be religious views, that could be language. So is, this is like really identifying who the customer is, is yes, that okay? Ab- ab- absolutely. So, okay. so we talked. So, the, we talked about the geography, which is where the customer okay. is. Okay. You know, now we're talking about who that customer is. Um, you know, like I said, uh, it, it could be the the background, right? Religious, political. Um, you know, it could be uh, everything from like age and. Um, I, I mean, are you are you categorizing like their income, their age, and all those types of things? I mean, get as yeah. specific as possible. Yeah. Yes. So so all of those fit into that uh, the demography, right? The, a- the age. Who who's your target age of your of your customer? Who is the, you know, what are, are they, are they married or are they yeah. single? You know, yeah. is it, do they have kids? Yeah. You know, do they have pets? You so know, getting that detailed products. is, is important, right? Cause when we get into offering things like that later, getting that detailed, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I like the idea that a lot of, um, a lot of clients use now where they, you know, the reason they use the term avatar is because we try to get people to really visualize who their client is. And so sometimes having an avatar or a, a, right. a, a you name your client, it's like, you know, Here's a guy. So with the daily mastermind, it might be entrepreneurs that have a uh, a side hustle or a small business owner or CEO. When you get very specific about who that person is, their demographics, then it's easier to really pull your marketing message together, right? Right. Okay. Absolutely. So and find them now. It's so easy to find people by targeting those specific niches. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So so the third thing okay. uh, that we're going to look at is you know. Who who are your customers, clients? Who are they associated with? What what is their you know a term uh, that is often used as affinity relationships, right? Okay. So, um, what types of clubs are these people involved with? What types of organizations are they involved with? Okay. Are they what types of magazines do they subscribe to? What types of blogs do they read? Where do they go on social media? Like who what who's their pack, right? Who are the Got people? It. Who are the people that these people are hanging out with, right? So. 
you know, at the at the end of this exercise, we should be able to know where these people live, you know, what what age we're targeting, you know, married, not married, or like, are we selling a pet yeah. product? Well, do yeah. they have dogs or cats? Yeah. Like, who who exactly is our, as you said, avatar? Yeah. Who is our perfect ideal client that we're going to now focus on? I like that. The level of detail you have, I think, can't be emphasized enough. I mean, because we're talking now um, with this whole idea of your market as who you're going after, where they are, and, 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 and their affinity and, and association so you can find out where you can, where you can communicate with them. So I really like this because if you'll do that exercise and you really drill deep on it, and, you know, people have heard this topic of, and I know you're a big proponent of, like, the Dream 100 mm-hmm. list. What, what is a Dream 100 list? What, why would you and how would you use a Dream 100 list? So there's a couple of ways to look at, at Dream 100. I know that, uh, you know, we're both fans of the book Business Breakthroughs mm-hmm. uh, by Great Chad book. Holmes. Yep. Um, he refers to that in the, in the business-to-business sales world as drilling down. And if you're, you're selling a business-to-business product, identifying the top 100 companies that you want to go to as a salesperson and those are that's your dream 100 list and that's who you want to that's who you want to focus on that's who you want to zero in on that's who you want to craft your message for. that's a great place to start because once you know who your market is you know who they are where they are and you develop this dream 100 list it gives you something to target right it gives you a place to go what well, the thing i would add to that is that nowadays um uh, dream 100 list is also referred to quite a few times about a way to really identify how you can start communicating with your your customer because you want to know what they're saying and how they're acting and what they're doing and so you can make this dream 100 list by listing out you know the top 10 podcasts they listen to the top 10 facebook pages instagram pages youtube twitter um, the top 10 blogs the top 10 periodicals because when you list these out those are places you can go see your customer hear your customer get feedback from your customer um, and so I like the idea of that, but I think it's a great exercise. In fact, maybe we'll we'll throw some things in the show notes as well for that, so that people can really drill down a level deeper. So, so, so in review, because we're going to be short on time here, the the marketing triangle that you have is basically going to be your market, your message, and your media. And the market really drives deep into geography, demography, and affiliation. Do I have that pretty much right? Is there anything you'd add to that? That's it. You got it. Okay, so once they get this market really identified, then what we'll do tomorrow um, when we get together and for our podcast this next week is we'll get into the message. And that's the part I think we can go really super deep in, like mm-hmm. how do you communicate your message? Um, and so what, what I'm going to also do is I'm going to throw a link in the show notes because, um, you know, Justin, if you're okay with it, if anyone has any questions on this particular area or they're having some trouble really identifying their market, um, would you be okay to take some some consults with a few people, just some free consults to be able to talk with them about that a yeah, little bit deeper? Yeah, ab- absolutely. Okay. For sure. We want to be able to provide value. One of the things we're doing here is trying to give you great information, education. But if you happen to have some questions on your market or some things that you'd like to go deeper into, whether you're a high achiever, a business owner, or maybe just you've got a side hustle and you're thinking about launching a new product and you want to get a little bit more strategic, um, click the link in the show notes and um, and schedule a consult. I think what I'll do is I'll link them right to your calendar and you allocate just a couple of openings. And so I'll try to put that in there for them. So okay, sounds good. Awesome. Cool. Well, that's our message for today. Thanks for listening. If you would do me a favor and share this podcast with someone you think would benefit from it. Also hit us up on the Daily Mastermind on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, but that's our message for today. George Wright III here with Justin Eli on the Daily Mastermind. Have a great day. We'll talk with you soon.